Shop Cabinet Build Part 1. Hola woodworkers, Paul Carlson here, small workshop guy. What I'm doing is building a shop cabinet. In fact, I'm going to build about six or seven different shop cabinets and they're all going to be the same technique. Over on Maker's Mob, uh, there's a builder, John Peters, you probably know him, he's a very well-known YouTube creator and a very talented guy. And so most of this build is from a series of videos that I watched him do. But I'm going to add my flavor to it for beginners. The first one that I'm building is actually going to be for a router table. I'm going to have a total of 16 drawers in this one cabinet. I've designed it so that it will fit out my regular door and into the carport when I need to get it out of my way. And that's the way you have to work in a small workshop. Everything has got to be movable and capable of moving it out of your way when you're working on something else. So part one is just going to be talking about the carcass. And I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to kind of show you step by step different stages in SketchUp so you can kind of get a good visual. And this is not intended to be a short video. I have another whole series of videos called What the Heck Is, and those are intended to be well under five minutes most of the time. And they're designed for raw rookie beginner woodworkers. And they're just talking about a lot of very short things. This is a, a longer build. This is for the new beginning woodworker who wants to maybe build some cabinets first for their workshop where it's not the most critical result in the world. What were the steps in order to get to where I am? And again, as I go through these steps, I will then go to a SketchUp model and show you the progress up to that step. An initial step was to actually do this face frame so I did the exterior of the face frame. Uh, for this set of cabinets, I'm using one and a half inch uh, wide uh, poplar, uh, three quarter inch thick. Poplar is a good wood to use because it's, uh, it, it's nice to work with, really nice for face frames. It's, it's a three quarter inch stock and one and a half inches wide. So I have obviously the rail, the top rail, the bottom rail, and then two styles, they're called. Things that are go horizontal are rails, and things that go vertical are called styles. So I have the top and bottom rail, and then two end styles, and then two middle styles. The end styles are one and a half inches wide. The middle styles are three quarters of an inch to line up with the three quarter inch uh, panel that's gonna go on the inside, which is uh, Baltic birch or Russian birch uh, plywood. When you uh, wanna do a really nice project, you probably wanna use Russian birch or Baltic birch because it doesn't have any voids. It's got lots of layers. Sometimes the top and bottom layer are a little thicker so you can do a little more sanding, but you do have to be careful with that because you could sand right through the layer and then it looks like crap. All right. The way in which the uh, face frame was constructed, you would think you would build the carcass and then put the face frame on it to dress it up, but actually the face frame first is a way so that you can get things lined up properly. And I'm gonna do some cabinets that are only gonna be one drawer wide, and I'm gonna do some cabinets that are gonna be two drawers wide, but the process is exactly the same. It's just that if I have one drawer wide, then I wouldn't have the two middle styles. I just have the ends. And if I'm gonna do two drawers wide, I would just have one middle style. Not necessarily in the middle, because maybe I want some drawers of different sizes. So anyway, rails and styles, face frame, one and a half inch poplar by three quarter inch wide. Did I say that already? I think I said it already several times. Put pocket hole screws lay on the back side of the styles and no pocket holes in the rails. And then I can lay that all down on my workbench and connect it 
with those pocket hole screws. Don't cut all your materials at once. Particularly, don't work on the drawers or cut the drawers when you're doing your initial preparation or dimensioning of wood because you might do what I did. I did a set of SketchUp plans that called for one thing, and then when I got the carcass built, I had made a mistake on the placement of these middle styles. And the result was I was more narrow over here and wider in the middle. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just not the way I did the plans. So I've altered the plans. But if I had cut all of my drawer parts, everything, most everything would be scrap because I would have drawers parts that are too wide uh, for the two ends and too narrow for the middle. So it would be one great big old cluster, uh, you know what. All right, so don't do your drawers till you've done your carcass. That's my first piece of advice. Uh, because you may not have done the carcass perfectly and you want your drawers to fit your imperfect carcass. All right, so step one was just do the face frame. Step two is to have your sides, your very outsides. But on this three quarter inch plywood, I have put a half inch uh, rabbit on the back edge facing in. So I have a half inch rabbet back there and that's going to eventually receive a half inch plywood back. So I get that uh, rectangular uh, side piece cut with nothing more than the half inch rabbet on the back. The rabbet, so this is three eighths deep and a half inch wide. <coughs> and that will receive the uh, plywood perfectly. So when I want to get those attached, you can use squeeze clamps to pull uh, this plywood piece against the style and then drill in the front and then uh, screw, them, screw them together. And I also put a layer of glue where this plywood piece is going to meet the style. Now I did the outsides first. That gave me some nice frame rigidity if you will. These are not in there yet. The next thing I want to do was get the bottom on. So to get the bottom on, I put a poplar, three quarter inch poplar, along the front edge and along the two sides. Underneath, they're basically uh, at the bottom of, of the sides and at the, and at the bottom of this uh, rail. So with that attached and on the inside, that gave me something to put the plywood bottom onto. And so I put that on there, uh, screwed, you know, drilled and countersunk and screwed uh, this plywood base, three quarter inch plywood, to those cleats, I guess you could call them. I put some uh, rectangles in the four, outside corners and I put a support beam underneath where these two internal panels are going to go. So I built up that base down there and then I put a face frame or a piece of poplar and that could well be plywood because it's going to be hidden. But poplar again is not that expensive. It's nice to work with. So I put that. So now I had that underneath layer completely built. So with the face frame built, the sides attached to that face frame, uh, some cleats put along the bottom, the bottom inserted on top of those cleats, and then build up uh, the areas down below that are gonna hold the wheels because it's gonna be a mobile cart and support these. I was then ready to put on a back brace and a top brace on the back. So those are inserted right at the edge of the rabbit with screws going through the sides and they're glued and that provides even more stability to my outside edges. I believe it was next but then I put pocket hole screws in the bottom of my internal panels. Not in the top, just in the bottom 
and then I attach the middle partitions to the base using those pocket holes and pocket hole screws and also I drilled through the middle face frame styles and attached it there so now and all the time checking with a big square to make sure that that things were staying square and and that's something you do throughout the whole process the time to catch something leaning or out of alignment is as you put it together not trying to come back and fix it later particularly when you're gluing things so i've got glue involved uh, between the face frame and the middle partition panels and so screwed and glued all right that uh at that point i've got all of the framing here and then the next thing I, I worked on was to create some cleats for shop cabinets. You know, it depends on how much money you want to spend, but where I've got 16 drawers, 16 sets of nice slides would be, you know, let's just call them $20 a set. Maybe they're $15 a set, but 16 times $20 a set is $320. So. 250 to you know 350 dollars for drawer slides is not something I want to do because I'm going to do six or seven cabinets and they're not this is going to be the biggest one with the most drawers but I just don't want that expense and I have tried these before and they work perfectly well if you do them the right way so these are uh, all of them are three quarters of an inch wide and again I'm using poplar uh, because you can't wear off a layer of poplar you can wear off a layer of plywood maybe not in my lifetime <laughs> not in the lifetime I got left but uh, my plan here is for my whole garage uh, and everything in it to be inherited by one of my two sons uh, who has an inclination toward this kind of stuff so I want this stuff to be built really, really well and to last for a long, long time. All right, so uh, on the cleat design, in these two middle panels, I have a one inch wide, three quarter inch thick cleats. In order to place them, uh, I went on my plans and decided what size everything should be and then once I did that mathematically on my plans I double checked my plans with what's called a story stick so I just got a piece of plywood and I laid out everything according to what my plan said the measurement was and then I checked that against the carcass that I built to see if my mathematics worked out all right and uh, I want to do that before I started installing cleats. After I was satisfied that, you know, my top drawers would fit in over here, they, I wouldn't run into these backing frames or the face frame, then I went according to my design and I created two spacers, one for the bottom drawers, and I'm gonna have this drawer be the same height as these two drawers here. So I have one for the bottom drawers, and it doesn't matter what size, because it depends on what cabinet you're building. And I just placed that in there, and then had pre-drilled my cleats. If you have a drill press, you probably want to do them that way, but you know, have them countersunk so that your screws get out of the way. Plus, it just looks better. And then I put some glue on the back of that cleat, and then I went ahead where I had pre-drilled it and I drilled again so that I'd have a starting point or a little bit of drill into the plywood. And then I went ahead and drilled in my screws. In this case, this was one inch and I did a one and a quarter inch screw. And again, it's glued. The screw almost sort of holds it in place while it, the glue is drying. But man, that is rock solid. So I got in those bottom cleats and the idea is for the drawer to fit in here. And then because the next cleat is designed 
uh, to hold the next drawer up. It also acts as something to keep your drawer from tipping. And my design is to have this be 1 16th of an inch taller than the tallness of my second drawer. So then I create a, another spacer that is 1 16th taller than my desired drawer height and then that can go in there to put in this cleat, this cleat, and this cleat. And over here on the sides, uh, I, I've even got uh, you know some more going up because I'm going to have more drawers there. The reason I'm gonna, not going to have as many drawers here, and this will probably be the last drawer, this cleat is just to keep it from tipping, is I'm going to have a, a router coming down here. The design of this cabinet is going to be such that I'm going to have a lift top. And so my top, and it's only going to be part of the top, it will lift up and expose my router for me so that I can change bits easily and do change routers or do whatever I want to do. <clears throat> so I, I'm tired of getting down and looking underneath my router table. And this is just an alternative to um, buying a you know, $400, $1,300 fancy uh, router lift. On the exterior side, because I have a face frame that is three quarters of an inch beyond the edge of this, in other words, this side panel is lined up with the outside edge of that face frame, so it looks decent on the outside of the cabinet. So the design over here on this side panel is for the one that's gonna hold the drawer that is one and three quarters inch wide because I have the three quarters inch behind the face frame and then I want the one inch out, kind of matching this one inch. And then, uh, so those are all put at the right height using that spacer again. Again, the bottom one is done by using the tall spacer and then this one is done by using the short spacer. The, after I get those all the way up, then I come back and I put just a three quarter inch wide, which is behind the face frame. Uh, and that's just intended so that the drawer won't rack left and right. And so the drawer will pretty much have a 1 16th inch clearance on the sides and this will keep it from racking. So I just put those in each one. Uh, for that purpose. All right, so that is the carcass. Uh, I, I'll attach the top at the very end because it, that would depend on what kind of a cabinet you're building. It could just be a simple plywood top. And so there's different ways to fasten that. You could just sort of fasten them up through the face frame or through this back frame as well, either straight or through an angle. But um, like I say, mine's gonna be a little special design for this one cabinet. All the other cabinets will just have a top for my tools. So that's the carcass. Uh, John Peters had a really neat way of doing it. A lot of the work I'm gonna do on the drawers is using a method that I learned from next level carpentry, Matt Jackson. So. Uh, nothing I do is invented by me. Well, that's not necessarily true. I kind of feel like I at least invented the name, the saw stallions for my saw horses, my trestle style saw horses. I don't know why I always whistle when I try to say trestle. So that's part one, the carcass of a uh, mobile workshop cart of whatever size you decide to make it. Construction method is all the same and rock solid. Small workshop guy, hoping you'll be safe in your workshop. And always remember, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf.